In the Middle Ages, the richest medieval people were kings and merchants. They would either spend their money for war and conquest or make more money. Some were also spent on art and architecture. The buildings they had were wood castles. In the early 12th century, stone replaced them. Living in a stone castle was more comfortable as it was warmer and drier than a wooden one. In the towns, wealthy merchants began living in stone houses. In the house, there is a fireplace and chimney. In that era, chimneys were a luxury. As time passed, they became more common, but only a small minority could afford them. With no doubt, no peasant could afford one. The rich ate well in the Middle Ages. The main pastime of the rich or upper class was hunting. Lords hunted deer with packs of dogs and killed them with arrows. They also hunted wild boars with spears. Both men and women went hawking. In the evenings they feasted, danced, and played board games such as chess and backgammon. In the Middle Ages, pepper and other spices from the East were extremely expensive. Wines from abroad were also not cheap either. Clothing also took up a large part of the budget, especially for people with luxurious tastes, silk, furs, gold thread, silver buckles, etc. The wealthy that could afford it bought large tapestries to hang on the walls for decoration and isolation during winter. Most rich people would have a stable full of horses and take care of them. They purchased perfumes to cover everybody's strong body odors. Jewelry, chess sets made from precious materials were also luxuries. In the late Middle Ages, a fine suit of armor cost a fortune, especially if it was from one of the famous Italian armorers who managed to combine strength with relative lightness. Only the richest noblemen could afford such equipment. One of the richest men and possibly the richest man in history is Mansa Musa, I of the Mali Empire. That man was very rich and not just like the average king or emperor, but rich enough to put them all to shame. He controlled a territory rich in gold, and according to history, he gave so much of it away during a pilgrimage to Mecca that he devalued the worth of gold in circulation and crashed several economies, especially in Cairo for about 12 years. That means he gave so much gold away that it lost its value for a time because it was no longer precious and rare as it used to be, but something every pauper had. In the Roman Empire, the rich people had a luxurious lifestyle. They enjoyed luxuries such as mosaics and panes of glass in windows. In the colder part of the empire, there is a hypocost. A hypocost is a system of central heating in a building that produces and circulates hot air below the floor of a room and may also warm the walls with a series of pipes through which the hot air passes. This air can warm the upper floors as well. The hypocost was a heating system used in wealthy Roman homes and Roman baths and is the closest thing to central heating today. Wealthy Romans also had wall paintings called murals in their houses. The wealthy owned very comfortable furniture. It was upholstered and finely carved. People ate while leaning back on couches. They generated light using oil lamps. Furthermore, some people had a piped water supply. Water was brought into towns in aqueducts. They went along lead pipes to wealthy individual houses. Many wealthy Romans owned large estates in the countryside, also known as villas. They were usually arranged to be self-sufficient. As well to farm workers, there were craftsmen like a blacksmith, a carpenter, and a potter. Both farm laborers and craftsmen could be slaves. If the owner of the villa was absent a man called a villas and his wife, the villa ran the affairs of the villa. Rich people traveled by horse or on long journeys by covered wagon. Sometimes they were carried in. The sons and daughters of the wealthy Romans received a quality education. The children went to a primary school called a ludus at the age of seven to learn to read and write and do simple and basic arithmetic. Girls left at the age of 12 or 13 and only boys proceed to secondary school where they would learn geometry, history, literature, and the art of public speaking, also known as an oratory. The teachers were often Greek slaves. The teachers were very strict. In Greece, the rich Greeks lived in large houses with several rooms. Usually, they were arranged around a courtyard and often had an upper story. In a rich home, furniture was basic and expensive. The Greeks stored things in wooden chests or hung them from wooden pegs on the walls. A rich home would also have a dresser to display expensive cups. People leaned back on couches. Those couches could also act as beds. 
The couches were simply wooden frames with rope webbing and mats or rugs laid on top. In the homes of the rich Greeks, olive oil lamps are used to generate light. In ancient Greece, meat was a luxury, and only the rich can afford it. The rich ate plenty of meat along with many vegetables. The Greeks also ate fruit such as raisins, apricots, figs, apples, pears, and pomegranates. They drank wine diluted with water. Rich Greeks ate much more varied and interesting diets such as roasted hare, peacock's eggs, or iris bowls in vinegar. The rich Greeks owned slaves. These slaves are usually prisoners of war or their descendants who did all the hard and dirty work. In a rich family, the wife was expected to run the home and, sometimes, to manage the finances. However, rich women would normally stay indoors and send slaves to do the shopping. Women, even rich ones, were expected to spin and weave cloth and make clothes. Rich Greeks wore silk and cotton and rich women carried parasols to protect them from the sun. They had a luxurious lifestyle. The rich in Egypt lived in large, comfortable houses with so many rooms. The walls were painted and the floors had colored tiles. Most wealthy houses had enclosed gardens with pools. Inside their homes, rich Egyptians had wooden furniture, such as beds, chairs, tables, and chests for storage. However, instead of pillows, they used wooden headrests, which are quite expensive. Most important of all, the wealthy class of people owned slaves who did all the hard and unpleasant work. Egyptians loved to wear jewelry. Only the rich could afford it, and they wore jewelry of gold, silver, and precious stones. In ancient Egypt, as in all early civilizations, meat was a luxury and only the rich could afford to eat it frequently. The Egyptians ate sheep, pigs, cows, etc. However, fish were also plentiful in Egypt. The Egyptians ate many vegetables, including marrows, beans, onions, lentils, leeks, radishes, garlic, and lettuces. They also ate fruit like melons, dates, and figs. Pomegranates were quite expensive and were eaten mainly by the rich. For entertainment, the Egyptians loved parties. If a rich person invited you to a feast, singers, musicians, dancers, jugglers, wrestlers, and jesters would entertain you. Musicians played wooden flutes, harps, lutes, drums, and clappers. At a rich person's banquet, guests were given a cone of perfumed fat to put on their heads. It slowly melted, leaving the wearer smelling nice. Egyptians loved hunting and fishing. In Egypt, the rich hunt for pleasure, while the poor hunt for food. Men caught birds with nets or by throwing curved sticks. Fish were caught with hooks or harpoons. Boys from wealthy families are well-educated and sometimes learn to be scribes. They learned by copying and memorizing, and the discipline they received was very strict. Teachers beat naughty boys. The boys learned reading and writing and also arithmetic. In the 16th century, the rich had wallpaper, but it was very expensive. Other wealthy people hanged tapestries or painted clothes on their walls. In Tudor, England carpets were a luxury only the richest people could afford. They were too expensive to put on the floor. Instead, they were hung on the wall or over tables. The wealthy class of people lit their homes with beeswax candles. However, they were expensive. It was only the rich who had clocks in their homes. The rich had pocket watches, although most people relied on pocket sundials. The upper class liked to show off their gold and silver plate. Wealthy people had silver or pewter spoons. From the mid-16th century, they used carriages as means of transportation. Most rich people rode in carriages. Traveling in a carriage was very uncomfortable because they did not have springs and the roads were very bumpy. It was also slow. However, rich people deliberately traveled slowly. They felt it was undignified to hurry and they took their time. The printing press made books much cheaper, so reading was a popular pastime for the wealthy. Playing cards were popular. Music and dancing were also very popular, but only among the wealthy people. During the 17th century, the status of merchants improved. People saw that trade was an increasingly important part of the country's wealth, so merchants became more wealthy and respected. However, political power and influence were held by rich landowners. In history, the rich had always lived a luxurious lifestyle, spent their money to acquire luxurious goods and items that are also invested in the future of their children.